During season eight, would you have been happy if Derek stayed after your lip sync? No! Thank you. No! No! In fact, if RuPaul would have said, honestly, don't even lip sync, Derek, just go home. I would have been like, fair. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race, and today we are on episode nine of season 13, which just happens to be the Snatch Game. And we have pretty much one of the most qualified Snatch Game uh, experts here with us today, the one, the only, the other, other host of The Pit Stop, Bob the Drag Queen, woo! Wow, that's so iconic and nice of you. Uh, interesting outfit choice. Well, thank you. you. Yeah, I'm kind of making it my thing. I notice no other queens are doing this. And... <laughs> we worked on getting this dress to me for this moment, and you showed I mean, you look amazing, but... <gasps> Before we dive into this episode, we want to thank the delicious new bubbly bounce sparkling water. Why are you making faces? Wait, no, I took my first sip. This is my first sip and I was like, this is good. <laughs> I haven't had any yet. And I was prepared to be like, ooh, this is actually, I was like, this is tasty. Authentic moments caught on camera. She better work. I was supposed to say, listen, I don't drink coffee, so something like Bubbly Bounce has a little kick that gets me together. But I ended up going, oh my God. Listen, I'm gonna take one thing, hold on, I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a Bubbly Bounce, girl. No calories, no sweetener. Yes, God. Thank you, Bubbly. Thank you, Bubbly. Mmm. So delicious and so repetching. So let's get into this, because we're at the point in the season where the queens need a pick-me-up to really get through the challenge that is Snatch Game. Bob, is it crazy that we're at episode nine, which is the episode that you won in your season? There have been five weeks where no one went home. <laughs> Bitch, five. Do you remember when RuPaul made eight girls all lip sync at once? <laughs> and now she's like, everyone lip sync? Out. Would you as a competitor have been happy to watch someone lose and just stay anyway? No. <laughs> as a viewer, I don't want to see it, let alone a competitor. And at this point, some of these girls, I mean, spoiler alert, but at this point, Elliot has been eliminated four times. <laughs> <laughs> at this In point, one <laughs> season. What the hell's going on? Last week, Rose got her first win in the Rusical, and Simone and Candy landed in the bottom two. But after telling Candy to sashay away, Rue decided to keep Candy in the competition. I think we all know how you feel about this, Bob, but tell me what you think about double saves in general. Okay, for me, double saves are not it. My season had a double elimination. That's right! Yes. We were not getting saved. RuPaul was like, listen, y'all, there's only nine episodes this season. Get rid of these hoes three and four at a time. Also, a double save for me is like, obviously one of these girls is not gonna win Drag Race. Like, what are we keeping them around for? Damn. Which one are you talking about, Simone or Candy? I think that Simone's gonna be the winner of Drag Race season 13. That's my opinion. I want you to know that Candy's gonna find that out from this episode and at tweet you, bitch. <laughs> I like Candy. Candy was actually my first pick. So speaking of Simone, she mentions that she's happy that Candy was saved. Do you believe Simone here? I mean, I've sent someone home before and it doesn't feel like uh, a great victory. It doesn't feel like, yeah, I sent this whole home. There's a bitter sweetness to sending someone home. So I can see what Simone means in that regard. I will say when she, RuPaul said, Candy, you stay, all the queens in the back were thrilled. I swear to God, I would have stood there like this. Oh, look, looking like Jan. Yes! <laughs> Here's something that Rosé said that really took me out. Rosé said something, I'm like, girl, that is a bold statement to make. She said, I guarantee you that I will make it to the top four. Bitch, if you don't make it, that video will haunt you for the rest of your life. It's bad karma. It's, it's, it's taunting the devil. And especially don't say that in an interview chair with a microphone on. Also, hell, according to season 13, probably all eight of them are gonna make it to the <laughs> top four. Who knows? <laughs> you know what? They should all be getting confident at this point. 
Elliot and her two T's. The next day, Rue enters the workroom and announces that for the mini challenge, the queens are auditioning for a new punk rock band, the Pantyhose. Bob, did you have any flashbacks to Street Meets? Okay, first of all, Street Meet was great. I like. I thought we nailed it. Um, you know, I'm just gonna say it. I still think we should have won that challenge. I loved in season eight the Street Meets. The whole Rock Band challenge was so good. I thought. Oh yeah. Who in the challenge was the most playful? Well, I feel like honestly, Tina was one of the ones. She was having a lot of fun. She was shaking that ass. Um, Denali was flipping all over the place. But I'm gonna give it to Tina. Yeah, Tina did kind of turn it. Yeah. Tina Turner. Oh my God, I see what she did, I see what she did. I mean, when it comes to Tina, she was simply the best. <laughs> I hate you. So next, Rue tells them for the maxi challenge this week, they're playing the Snatch Game. Listen, it's the most wonderful time of the year for me. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. Like, I'm living. <laughs> So Bob, you're a Snatch Game winner, and I believe you were the first queen to play two different parts on the Snatch Game. What made you decide to do that? I really couldn't decide between the two, and I really wanted to do Carol Channing. Like, I remember thinking I want to do Carol, but I also wanted to do Uzo. I just couldn't choose. And I remember going back and forth. I had three choices, but I, I whittled it down to two. And I said, honestly, I'm just gonna do it. And everybody being like, how did they let you get away with it? And I was like, I didn't ask. I didn't tell anyone. I snuck my Carol Channing outfit in under my Uzo outfit, and then I just did it without permission. A lot of people don't have that much mm, gall. What are they gonna do? They're gonna stop and say, put your other costume back on. I guess that's the worst thing they could have done. Uh, yeah, literally. If you were to go back and do Snatch Game again, who would you play now? I wanna go back and do Tim Gunn. This is my go. I feel like me as Tim Gunn would just be really hilarious. Me and RuPaul both in suits. I have that like aging, like slicked back hair. Glasses on the edge of my nose. Um, and then you're like, what are you going to be making today? And then you're like, have you thought about a hound's tooth? Like, um, well, here's, um, I just love Tim Gunn's voice. Um, the way he speaks to people, um, really tickles me. It does. <laughs> it really does. I don't even know who I would do. I, I, I've not, I don't know. It's a hard thing. Snatch Game is a hard thing. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Maybe you should land to Dolly Parton. Well, that was the problem. My backup was Dolly Parton and we just did it in the Divas Live Challenge. Yeah, it should have been your front up. <laughs> it was, it was, I honestly, it was awful. I remember I was touring and my boyfriend was at a gay bar watching Snatch Game and he texted me in the middle of the episode, this is really hard to watch. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh my God. So queens start to reveal who they're playing and strictly from their celebrity choice, Bob, pretend you haven't seen the challenge yet. Who do you think picked the most fun character? Richard Simmons is my favorite character out of the ones they picked. Richard Simmons is just, there's so much mystery and excitement and cultural references surrounding Richard Simmons. Yeah, that's a really good choice. Also, I like when people pick the Jonathan Vanessa's of the world, the Richard Simmons of the world. Paris was pretty good. Like Mary Queen of Scots was a great choice. Harriet Tubman was a great choice. Bob, Candy did not know who Mary Queen of Scots was. Did you? Yes. There's a whole movie about it. There's a whole movie. It's called Mary Queen of Scots. <laughs> Girl, I thought she was Carrot Top up there. I had no idea who she was. So when the queens realize that Elliot with two T's is playing Rue McClanahan, they mention doing a Golden Girl is like a gay no-no. Do you agree with that? No, not necessarily. I mean, for Elliot, yeah. But for, <laughs> for but I've seen tons of drag queens do really great renditions of Golden Girl. Yeah. Doing someone with a thick accent, and Rue McClanahan's character in the Golden Girl has a very thick accent. You have to be able to nail it. Now, Rosé is nailing this accent. Yeah. She's doing a very good job with this accent. Loomis Thing is just choosing when to be Southern. It's a little in and out. It's a little in and out. Yeah, it's not good. It's bad. If, but if it's in and out at all, then it's bad. I have to ask, what do you think of the conversation between RuPaul and Utica about the afro, the squirrel afro? What is... Okay, this is when wokeness takes a really weird turn. Like, what are you, just wear the afro. Like, RuPaul made a good job point. There are white people who have afros. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. Should, should we cancel Bernadette Peters? 
Yeah, listen, two of the white people with afros were characters in the Snatch Game. Bob Ross <laughs> and Richard Simmons both have afros. Yeah. As somebody who gets canceled within an inch of my life about every six weeks, I understand being gun shy. I understand the trepidation. But when RuPaul tells you to your face, yeah, but that person has an afro. I appreciate the interest in being sen in being sensitive. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. We also see Tina struggling to break out and show how funny she is, which I find very shocking. Because you and I both know Tina. In New yeah. York, how funny is that bitch? But Tina's very funny, but it's a different kind of funny. Like when you find a way to tell your humor through your performances, through your mixes, through your numbers, it's not the same as vocalizing and improv. I mean, different funnies, like if you're funny telling stories versus you're funny doing stand up versus you're a funny actor versus you're a funny, you do funny songs versus you look funny, you work, you, you do physical comedy. Like one brand of humor does not translate to all humor. It's a bummer because Tina is so funny. Yeah. Cause I can't do physical comedy. I don't have what it takes to do any amount of physical comedy that looks respectable. Well, it's too much movement. I have bad knees. I'm not interested. <laughs> now I'll just stick to my dry, my dry sense of humor. So let's talk about Snatch Game. Who Snatch Game did you get a kick out of? I was loving uh, the Paris Hilton. I was loving Mary Queen of Scots. Those are my two favorites, for sure. Yeah, that Paris was really, really good. I think that Paris could have been a very safe performance, but that was like a really strong Snatch Game. And she looked like Paris Hilton. She really did. I was gagged. I think picking a historical character really gives you kind of carte blanche, which is smart. I wanted for someone to just do Jesus Christ on the Snatch Game. Like that is gonna be the Snatch Game of all. When someone is like, I'm gonna be doing Jesus Christ. That is so funny. Somebody has to do that. Which Snatch Game did you think had the most energy? I mean, I would say Richard Simmons was the, probably the most energy. I mean, it was up, it was like, inner, it was literally exercising. It was loud. Fake legs. Yeah, fake, le <laughs> fake legs. There was puppetry. So obviously I'm gonna give it to um, Tina. When you strip down what drag is, you strip down the gender part of it. People like Richard Simmons, that is a drag queen. They just don't call it a drag queen. Oh, full on. I love like that. Who struggled the most? The captain of the struggle bus was you. I the know. Mary Queen of Struggles. I mean, it was wild. I was like, girl, I didn't want to watch it. I didn't want her to be on my screen. I, I didn't want to be associated with it. I know. It was rough. I know. Are we going to talk about what Candy was doing? How was that Patrick Star? A girl, can we just, can we just, you know what? It doesn't say it on the cards, but I'm writing it in, okay? Well, that was, that was Candy Muse in a head wrap. I'm on, thank you for all, Instagram, and I'm on, I was like, this is not Patrick Star, and you know it's not Patrick Star. No, anybody, I mean, I, I know Patrick, and he has a, a, his presence is a lot more like lifted and presentational, like very feminine. I, I don't know Patrick Star, um, and I'm, but I'm vaguely familiar with his work online. When is Patrick Star that hungry? Does Patrick Star talk about eating that much? She do eat, but like, I don't think she eats more than people. <laughs> like, it's, she's not a food channel. Bob, what do you think of Denali as Jonathan Van Ness? Honestly, I think Denali is doing a pretty good job. If you ever met Jonathan Van Ness, that really is how they talk. And like on or off camera, like no matter where you are, that's just kind of how Jonathan Van Ness talks. And I thought it was a great, the look was great. That wig looked expensive yeah. as <laughs> The impersonation was good and she made, it, she made the jokes happen. That's the- Yeah. Also, did you clock that at the end of the challenge, Raven came in second place once again? <laughs> yes, I was like, by the way, I don't know if y'all know this, when you watch Drag Race, no one ever, the, the, the panelists never win Snatch Game, unless it's Raven. <laughs> <laughs> that is so shady. Also, Raven looked so skinty, tan, and yeah. beautiful. Stunning, truly stunning. So the next day, some of the girls who struggled aren't quite in touch with that reality. Okay, Olivia and Utica arguing over who was the worst when they were both horrible is wild. I wish she would have been there. I wish she would have been there. Girl, kind of, kind of like that flamingo, you don't have a leg to stand on. Like this was not, this is not the argument for you. Y'all need to be uh, learning your song and making sure your outfit looks good. Utica was like, that banana saved you. And then 
And then Olivia's like, my humor saved me. And I was like, those are both lies. <laughs> you think the banana You think a piece of produce you? saved you? From your memories on season eight, did the queens know who did well and who didn't? Were they open and honest? Yeah, we all knew that um, that me and Derek and uh, me, Derek, Chi Chi, and Dorji did well. And we all knew that uh, Naomi and Betty did not perform very well. We see a little tension emerge between Utica and Olivia. What did you think of that? It was ridiculous. Like, what are you arguing about? Like, you're, you're you were both bad. I love that for Utica and Olivia, this is probably their version of a full out brawl. Like, well, they're arguing about who's second to last. Bitch, there's two people in the bottom, not one. Yeah, that is so true. What did? F oh, I gotta pee real quick. Sorry. There was something that when they were arguing, they were like, oh, I gotta pee. At some point, I I'll take it when I get back. It'll be quick. <laughs> I'm gonna do my swipe ups then while he's gone. Is that okay? Hi, it's me, Trix and Mattel. I'm over on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube. The runway theme is Fascinating Fascinators. Do you like a fascinator? Yeah, I think fascinators are really cute, actually. I don't wear them a whole lot. I have a few, but I love a fascinator. I do too. I think they're fun. And I liked that everybody on this runway, I mean, we'll get into it, but they really went kind of theatrical with the. Yeah, yeah. There was one or two I didn't like, but we'll, we'll get into them. First up, we have Olivia Lux. Olivia Lux. I mean, her look was pretty cute. I like the splash on the head. It was it was a cute look. I liked it. Yeah, it was a, it was it was a pretty cool twist on a really basic silhouette. I really did like it. The mercury like it was a huge splash on her head, and I mean doing yeah. like a scientist look. It was kind of dark for her in a good way. I liked it. And then we have Rosé. It, it was cute. I, I agree with Michelle. It's the first time that she has not used the ruffles to completely obliterate her shape. She finally found a way to flatter herself with it. It seems like she likes to pack on a lot of shapes without really preserving this, you know? Up next, we have Utica. What did you think of this little picnic ant fantasy? I, you know, I don't like a fascinator that's like an entire thing. Like, give me a take on the thing. But if it's just a basket on your head, it doesn't speak to me. I really feel you on that. When, when a queen's like, I'm fries, and I just have an entire bottle of ketchup on my head. You have a you have a basket on your head. That's not a fascinator. That is a wicker basket, Mary. That's a handicraft. Yeah, I did really like the garters, the long garters, and I did like the ants crawling up the Very way. cute. That part was cute. It was just a fascinator I didn't like. Up next, Simone. Simone's was great. I really love this look. At, at first, I was like, what's going on? I don't, I don't get what's going on, but then she turned around, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. It was really powerful. The statement was powerful, but even without the statement from the front, I was like, ooh, she's going really simple, but it looks really good. I agree. It was really good. Bob, what did you think of Gottmik? Gottmik's look was amazing. I, that safety pin was just so cool. The outfit was great. I'm so glad that the Gottmik signature clown face was back. I loved it. Yes, that like bowl, bowl cut bang with a mullet and like, the outfit had so many textures. It looked, I mean, the outfit really looked like something like, oh, that's like almost real clothes. Yeah. Denali. This look is cute. I like this. Um, I mean, I'm triggered by roller skating. I'm triggered by roller skating. I forgot about your roller skating. I mean, Denali's roller skating, the outfit wasn't legendary. I like the fascinator a lot. And I just love the roller skating. It was just so good. The outfit, mama, the outfit was Leg Avenue. The outfit was Secret Wishes, yeah, Halloween yeah. Store Waitress. The outfit was not great. If she would've lost the skates or the um, rollerblades, it'd, it'd have been a boot. Yeah, if she had a stronger look, she might have... No, I take it back. She wouldn't have won this week. I take it back. Elliot with two T's. Girl. Girl. Let's just take a second. Yeah, get out, please. Leave. I can't be here for this. <laughs> I was mad that they liked it. Exactly. I was, mad that they, I was like, every time she would call my screen, I would just like, get it off the screen. Why, where's your lipstick? Why are you not wearing lipstick? What is this hair? Why is this fabric so sad on your leg and on your shoulder? Yes. It was bad. Yeah. This look was bad. I think Elliot also has done some beautiful makeups on Drag Race, and this makeup was, I did not live. Bad. 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 The word you're looking for is bad. And when you have that Snatch Game performance, you can't have this runway. Tina Burner. Oh, the f***ing horse thing. Yeah, I just don't get, I don't get like... Was she the horse? I think she's been the horse girl. 
Was the horse on her head? I, I just, the, I just, it just, once again, not body flattering, not big enough hair, not great makeup. I just didn't like the look. And also the horse was like to the side. I was upset about it. I did not live. And then finally, Candy Muse. I'm suing. The hound's tooth. Well, that's my thing now, obviously. <laughs> this is the definition of representation matters. I also think that there's a chance that the designer who made that for her used my old fabric. Because I, if, if that outfit is made by a uh, black and white striped, then Candy Muse, you owe me for some fabric. <laughs> Run me my coin. <laughs> But you know what? Since it's your fabric then, we can't criticize it. I bet it was flawless. It was amazing. This fascinator though, it was kind of hard to read. Well, fascinators are hard too because it's not just the size, it's also the placement. Hers was really wide, it was spelling out her name. The name was kind of hard to read. I don't know that I would spell my name out in feathers. You know what I mean? Like spell, if you're gonna spell your name, spell it in something easier to read. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't live. Yeah, no, I did not live. I was not alive. So which of the Queen's runway was the most exciting to you? Oh, honestly, the one that gave me the most feelings, the most emotion was Simone. That's a really good point. Especially in an yeah. episode where it's all laughs, it was actually even more effective with that reveal. So, I mean, it was a little hard to look at, but I think that's the point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which one of the Queen's runways was your favorite? Got Mick. Got Mick won this one. She really did let those hoes have it. That's a fascinator look. Who was the worst? Uh, Elliot. Elliot. I really didn't like it. And I love pink. And like, that, it was just so wrong. To have a bad snatch game followed by a tough runway is like, oh my gosh. I felt I felt bad for her. I'm very compassionate. It was, it was, it was bad. Yeah, you're compassionate. My, my thought process was, I think it's time. So after the judges' critiques, we find out the winner is Got Mick. Congratulations, second win. Do you agree? Congrats, Got Meek. Um, Got Meek. I, <laughs> so you see, every episode someone called you, I'm sure. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. Got Meek deserved to win this episode. She was great. It was so funny, so well thought out. So the bottom is Utica and Elliot. Do you agree with the bottom? Yeah, I agree with this. Yeah, there. This. this is a good example of where the runway might be the thing that keeps you out of the bottom. And Olivia had a good runway. Yeah. Utica and Elliot lip sync to Fascinated by Company B. Which queen gave a more refreshing lip sync performance? It was Utica. Utica's performance was better than Elliot's and- She let that whore have it. Elliot's obviously a wonderful mover, but Utica kind of just like went with the song. Yeah, I agree. Utica won that lip sync, hands down. Hands down. Utica wins and Elliot sashays away. Do you think it was the right call? Yes. I know. It's time. It's time. It's God bless you, Elliot. The it other T is for time. It's time. Yeah, exactly. I have to ask you, as a betting woman in Vegas, at this point in the competition, who do you think the winner is going to be? Simone. Simone is the winner of Drag Race. Speak on it. Why? Simone had a really strong start. They went through a couple of bumps where Simone was not able to rise to the occasion. Outside of that, Simone has her runways are great. She's very funny. Her timing is good. She's a pretty good actor. It's just that when it comes to dancing, she tends to fumble. Yeah. Other than that, she's really just nailing it. So in my opinion, right now, Simone is the winner of Drag Race's first time. Bob, I'm so happy you're here today. You are so fun and I love you very much. And I know the viewers of The Pit Stop love you. I love you too. And can you just uh, clean the armpit area of the dress for you that? Oh, it just a caked foundation. You better believe I paint that armpit. <laughs> They're not gonna get the girl. Do you really? Sometimes. I paint the full arms and hands. What? If I'm in an updo, I paint the back of my neck. I'm a crazy person. I have to say, go to Bob's channel and stay for the makeup videos. Oh it's my all God. about Bob oh trying other queens makeup and uh, it's always a journey. I can't believe I haven't done yours yet. That's crazy. Thank you all for watching The Pit Stop and thank you Bubbly Bounce for these delicious new drinks. Look over here, the Drag Race YouTube channel is always bringing amazing content. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing.